how should you set up your photography business? Do you need to have an LLC? Should you have an S Corp? What do you do for insurance contracts? If you're actually starting a photography business or any kind of creative business for that matter, how do you actually set that up? That's something that kind of nobody talks about, or if they do, they don't really cover all the bases. So inside of this video, I'm gonna give you a crash course in setting up a photography business or a creative business from scratch based on the little bit I've learned along the way starting a couple businesses in a couple different countries. Are you ready? Let's hit that intro and get into it. Hey guys, my name is Ryan here at Signature Edits. I help photographers build their businesses, take better photos, and hopefully just become better people along the way. <laughs> I've got some experience building businesses of my own. I've been doing photography full-time for about eight or nine years now, and basically just sharing the lessons I've learned along the way. And one of the big, big lessons that I've learned is basically to do with actually setting your business up and growing a photography business. In fact, that's kind of what Signature Edits was started with, was the fact that when I was starting my business, I was so frustrated by just trying to find information and it wasn't there, that I said, okay, all these things that I had to learn the hard way, I'm gonna try and share with people. And so I created a membership, teaching people how to grow their business, get more clients, and basically create a passionate income, okay? So with that said, we're gonna get into the actual nitty gritty of should you set your photography business up as an LLC or an S Corp? When you're starting out, like what are the basic steps you need to take? So the first thing, first point, first point I wanna make is that action beats complexity every single time. Now, what do I mean by this? Action beats complexity. Well, what happens, and I speak as someone who has gone through this, what happens when you start off is that when you're starting out, you tend to want to know everything. And everything is unknown. And so you sort of venture out on this merry quest and you just have this beautiful little sailboat that you sail into the abyss. It's supposed to be a lightning bolt. So you can tell I'm definitely an artist. And um, you're kind of just sailing into the unknown and you're very confused. And so it's like, it's very easy to get paralyzed by not knowing what to do. And so you say, should I do an S Corp? Should I do a C Corp? Should I get incorporated? Should I have an LLC? And then you make this big list of things because what happens is you start researching and you're like, okay, I need one of these, 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 need one of these. And then the next thing that happens is you're just sitting there and you're kind of like overwhelmed at the fact that there's just like way too much to even take on. And so probably what happens is that you're like one week project which was like get my business set up and then start getting clients, turns into like a one year thing where it's like, okay, now I have to have my website custom developed. Now I have to have my contracts reviewed by a lawyer. Now I have to have an LLC, so I have to save up and spend $1,500 doing that. Now I've got to, and you kind of get where I'm going with this, right? Is it just goes on and on and on. So complexity is going to burden you. And so that's kind of the main thing I want you to take at the very beginning of this is like point number one, action is going to beat complexity every single time. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you just set up your business based on the minimum for results versus the maximum of possibilities, woo, you're always going to win with this method. Because what happens is if you actually start out and you're like, okay, I wanna set up a photography business. And you say, okay, get the LLC, get the website, get the custom contracts, get the proposals, get the blah, 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 blah. You could have just gone out and started knocking on doors of different businesses and said, hey, I take great photos, 50 bucks, do you wanna hire me, right? And then if you went door to door to door and you just did that and you got 10 gigs, okay, now you've got 10 gigs worth of portfolio. You didn't need a contract, you didn't need an LLC, you didn't need anything. You could have just knocked on some doors, traded 50 bucks cash for some photos and been done. And that compared to sitting there and spending $1,500 on your LLC and another $2,000 on your website and another $500 on your contracts and you're $3,000 in and you still haven't gotten a single sale. So I think the, the question is not, do I need to register my photography business as an LLC? The question is, do you have a photography business to begin with? Because this person here, who is just like drowning in complexity and thinks they need to do all these things before they can start, doesn't realize that until you have a business, those things don't really matter. So you wanna find like the minimum number of things that actually matter and do those. So when you're starting off as a photographer, what are those minimum things? Well, obviously it's going to be actually just going out and shooting photos. 
getting really amazingly good at the things that you need to be good at, which is shooting photos, creating work, whatever it is that you do, right? Now, the second thing that you need to do as a photographer starting out in your business journey is you need to shoot photos and two, you need to make money. Okay, so we've got two things we need to do. We need to go out, we need to shoot photos, build our portfolio, build our skill, become world-class at what we do, and then we need to go out and we need to make some money. That's what a business is. A business makes money. A business doesn't make contracts. A business doesn't make LLCs. A business doesn't make proposals, templates, websites. That's not what a business does. A business serves value to people. So you solve problems in exchange for dollars. And unless you have this, you don't have a business. An LLC is not a business. An S-Corp is not a business. A big fancy contract is not a business. Are you going out and taking photos? Are you talking to customers? Are you exchanging photos for money or whatever your creative thing is? Are you doing that for money? And if you have cash flow, you have a business. If you don't have cash flow, you don't have a business. Now, let's actually make this like tactile and actually kind of answer the question of, okay, when do I need an LLC or an S-Corp and what is all of that? Okay, watch this. LLC is basically a pretend person who is your business. So the reason you would want to do that is twofold. One is for tax, and two is for liability. Now liability is just a fancy way of saying if sh hits the fan, you have somebody else that that person can go after in a court rather than you. So it's blaming the business. We're gonna make this super grassroots, right? Like there's more to it than that, but essentially that's all it is. You have an LLC because you want to get more efficient with your taxes and you wanna get more efficient or you wanna protect yourself in terms of liability. Now there's two reasons you don't need an LLC when you start out as a photographer. The first reason is tax. Now, depending what country you're in, if you're in Australia, Canada, US, it doesn't really matter. All of them will have a minimum income at which you can avoid tax to begin with. So as a photographer starting out, I'm, I hate to break it to you, but unless you happen to be magnificent and you do everything right and you take tons of action and you've enrolled in the Signature Edits photography membership course and just you're making six figures in your first year, unless you do that, um, for most people, you're not going to have enough income that you need to worry about tax because you're either going to be paying very little tax or you're going to pay no tax. So that's the first thing. You don't need an LLC because you're not paying much tax. So there's no real strategic advantage for you. Okay. When does an LLC start to make sense? Well, once you can save more than the LLC cost. So it depends where you are. So this is just a random number. Okay. Might be totally wrong. Might be totally different in your country. But when I last looked into setting up an LLC, it was about 1500 bucks per year. Okay. Now, some of you who have LLCs, in which case I don't know why you'd be watching this video anyways, but you might say, hey Ryan, I get mine for like five, six hundred bucks, whatever. Okay, there's also the hassle of like doing it and finding somebody to do all the paperwork, submit it every year, keep it current. So whatever, I mean, <laughs> I might be totally wrong here, but it's, it's expensive. So basically, if you're not saving money on the tax portion, why would you spend that $1,500 and several days worth of whatever, worrying about this whole thing? Okay, number two reason to do it is the liability. Now this, as a guy who worked in insurance for approximately a year, I am a world expert, obviously. Um, liability is covered in two ways. One, by blaming someone else, and two, by having insurance, which lets someone else cover, basically, the lawyers coming after you in court, okay? So if you're out, you're taking photos, and it's a beautiful wedding, and then for whatever reason, your camera gear fails, and then they sue you because you missed that moment, or more likely, you are just walking backwards, you trip, and you hit grandma, and then grandma needs a hip surgery or something like that then you might get sued. Now, insurance exists for this exact purpose. So you don't necessarily need an LLC because even in an LLC, you're still gonna have to deal with legal costs if someone comes after that LLC. It doesn't mean you get off scot-free and it's like, oh, I don't have to pay grandma anymore. You still do. So insurance, when you're starting off, is what covers this, okay? And for most of you, and again, this is not legal advice whatsoever, but for most of you, if you're just going into um, photography, you're doing like the odd gig on the side, whatever, even the insurance is, you should have it. But what are the odds of you going into a restaurant, taking a couple photos and accidentally burning the place down? Not that high, okay? So this is the reason that I wouldn't recommend an LLC because your actual liability is not that high to begin with and insurance policies are actually pretty reasonable in most places in most countries. So 
That's what you do. You use insurance rather than an LLC. So that's talking about the actual LLC. Now let's talk about LLC versus S, S Corp versus other options. Okay, here's what you need to know. Nothing. You do not need to know about LLC versus S Corp, which is better, which fits my situation better, which should I use because you're not making any money. Chances are, as a photographer starting off in business, maybe you're making 10 grand a year, 20 grand a year, 30 grand a year, I don't really care. If it's less than 100K, this is not your issue. If it's less than 100K, you need to be building your business. not worrying about tax and blah, 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 all these other things to do with LLC, S Corp. And what is business? We're making sales by providing value, solving problems. This is solving them. And exchange for money. You're exchanging value for dollars. That's what you are doing as a creator, okay? You are not in the business of setting up an LLC. You are not in the business of worrying about all this minutia. Now let's talk about the other stuff that is kind of goes into setting up your business. So if you're not doing an LLC, Ryan, what should I do? Well, in 99% of countries I know of, it might be different where you are, but I don't know. By default, anybody can start a sole proprietorship and if my spelling fails us, that's okay because that's not what this video is about. What is a sole proprietorship? It's basically you, as a person, are selling stuff. And on your tax return, you're just going to say, hey, I have a sole proprietorship. And you're going to list however much money you make and pay tax on that. So it's actually pretty simple. It sounds complex, but it's not. By default, you start a business, it is a sole proprietorship. You don't have to like set it up or go through any complex stuff. Most of the time, all that is required is you need to register your business. And that's going to vary a little bit depending on what country and what state you're in. So in the state of California, you have to submit like the registration thing and the name request. And then you also have to publish it in a local paper. It's a really weird random rule. In a place like BC, Canada, all you have to do is literally register the business online. It takes about 20 seconds and it costs 30 bucks. So you basically make sure the name, the DBA, is available. Now DBA stands for doing business as. which lets you put on your invoice and put on your bank account whatever your photography studio name is. So you don't actually have to do this. You can literally just bill people as whatever your name is. So in my case, it would be Ryan Breitkreitz would literally be what it says at the top of the invoice. And then my bank account, of course, is also going to be Ryan Breitkreitz and everything is just going to be my name. But if you want to do a doing business as and switch it to like flower power, Bacon photos. Yeah, twist. You didn't expect that, did you? Then you're going to need a DBA. And so that's what you set that up for. So what is my recommended approach? One is going to be setting up a sole proprietorship. So register your business. Okay. Two is going to be setting up a dedicated bank account. Now this is spoken semi hypocritically, because I actually don't even have a dedicated business bank account. So that just shows you, one, you can do this without adding a ton of complexity, and two, <laughs> I still need to follow what I preach. So the reason I would do this at the start rather than later on where I am now is now I have like all these payments coming from a bunch of different kind of accounts, and some of them I use mostly for business, but sometimes for personal stuff, and that can get you into trouble later on, both with your accounting and if there's ever any issues in terms of like actually separating your business from yourself in a court. If you're mixing assets, it's just not a good idea. So don't do that. Set up a dedicated business account, and you're going to want to get a credit card if you can, exclusive for the business. And this is just like basically going to make it so easy to track your books. That's the reason you're doing this. It's not because it's going to give you a bunch of benefits other than that. You just want things organized. It's going to save you a ton of time. Trust me. It'll help you budget. It'll help you actually track for tax time. It'll help you take advantage of the best um, possible systems in the future. You're setting yourself up to win basically. Okay. So we don't want it to be complex, but we do need a certain minimum number of things. We want a dedicated business bank account, and then we want a dedicated card, and then all expenses and all payments 
through the business account. Now, if you're doing cash, again, I'm never going to give you advice on this. If you're doing cash, you can choose to deposit it into the account or keep it separate. And how you do your bookkeeping with that is up to you. However, <laughs> the idea is you want everything in one place flowing through one place. So then that way, when it comes time for taxes, because it's a sole proprietorship, it's just your income. Like 100% of that business money is your money and you just less the amount of expenses that you've paid and that's your tax return. So we're not worrying about like actually paying yourself as a corporation. You can withdraw from that account as you need it into your personal account. That's our basic idea. So when you need the money, they pay you $3,000. That does not go into your personal account. It goes into your business account. And then from there, let's say I want to take that and spend it all on a brand new guitar amp. I'm going to take it and put it into my personal account. Before I touch it, before I spend it, it's going to go right there. Now, if you want to take it one step further, really cool book that you can check out is Profit First. And this book basically just has a bunch of principles for a lot of us as business owners. What we do is we say, okay, we're going to set up a business and then we're going to basically make some money, spend money on whatever we need to run the business and whatever's left over, that's profit, right? That's kind of what you're taught in school. Well, this sort of flips that whole concept on its head with the idea being that we actually start by saying, okay, how much money do I need from this business? And you take that money, you withdraw it first rather than spending it on expenses. And then you have to figure out how to run your business on what you have left over. Now, this is really important because as a business person, not just a creator, but as a business person, you need money, right? You need it to live. You need to buy groceries. You need to have a decent lifestyle. You don't want to just be working and working and working and not making any money. That's no fun. So what we want to do is as we get money from clients, We deduct certain percentages for different categories of living. So some of this is going to be our expense category. Like literally, this is just what it costs, new gear, um, prints, whatever it is you cost, cost to actually make a business run, right? Some of it is going to be for fun. Some of it's going to be for your savings and investments. Right? And so you can break this into as many categories as you need, but Profit First kind of talks about some different suggested categories to start from. So rather than just taking it from your business account into a personal account, and then that's it, you just spend it however you want, this suggests, okay, we're going to take it from our business account, we're going to separate it into several different personal accounts, and those accounts are going to be separated from one another, so then that way we're not drawing money from our fun account or we're not spending it on our fund when it's coming out of some other, our savings account, right? We want to make sure that we're still investing in our savings and the future. And we've got a rainy day fund and we've got a fun fund, right? So that's kind of the basic principle behind that. All right, so we talked about LCs. We talked about S-Corps and corporations. Basically, you don't need to worry about them until you're making some actual money. That's the first thing you need to do is go out and shoot for money. Now, how do we get our clients? That's what I talk about inside of the Signature Edits membership. So it's got literally, I think we've got 20 hours of training on different ways to get clients because that's the number one issue you have as a photographer, right? You probably already know how to take some photos and yeah, you need to improve and work on your craft. But the biggest problem you have is going to be not knowing where to get clients, right? If we can get clients, it doesn't matter pretty much any of the other stuff, right? If we've got enough money, we can solve those problems. We can hire people to do the books for us. We can hire people to figure out the answers for us. We can even hire people to shoot for us and to edit for us as long as we can get the clients, right? At the end of the day, this is all we need. We need revenue. We need people who want to pay us to provide them value, to solve problems, to do something that is valuable to them in exchange of $4. That is number one. It's the only purpose your business has is to serve people and exchange that value for money, okay? So when it comes to L, L Corp, S Corp, LLC, trademarks, sole proprietorships, all you need to know is how to get clients. <laughs> That's the first thing. After that, the details, you figure out that as you go. But to start out with, make the main thing The main thing, you might have heard this quote, do the first things first. As creatives, 
Our tendency is to want to build the website because it's pretty and it's fun. We want to make our proposals because they're fun and they're creative. We want to register an LLC because it feels like we're being really productive. But we're not. All we're doing is procrastinating from what's actually really necessary and important, which is going out and getting clients. And the reason we procrastinate it is probably because it's uncomfortable. Why is it uncomfortable, Ryan? Well, it's uncomfortable, if you actually think about it, probably because we don't like conflict. We don't like rejection. We don't like the unknown. We might have a fear of sales. Whether that's presenting live, whether that's knocking on doors, whether that's just an icky kind of feel about asking somebody for money, whether that's a mindset thing of like, oh, I just don't really know. I'm not qualified to actually ask someone for money for this. There's a lot of mindset stuff that goes into this. And most of the time, the reason you're not doing what you know you need to be doing is because you're procrastinating because of one of these things. There's an uncomfortable feeling that keeps you trapped. And so it's breaking through that feeling to actually do what is necessary, putting the first things first, rather than just a whole bunch of excuses, really, just covert excuses. I need to set up my LLC first. I need to get a contract first. I need to blah, 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 blah. No, no, you don't. You need to go out. You need to shoot. You need to build your portfolio. And you need to build a business. Now, there are some things you should have in place. We talked about the bank account. We talked about sole proprietorship for tax reasons. The last thing that you really do need is a contract, obviously. Well, maybe that's not so obvious. Why? Because of liability. And let's take this to its very, very basics because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not giving you a bunch of legal advice, but I will say that the purpose of a contract is to outline an agreement between two parties, okay? So a contract does not have to be this big five-page document of legalese. It's just an outline of, I agree to do X for Y, right? And then in case Z happens, here's what happens and what we agree to, okay? So X is normally going to be your deliverables, why, basically what you are going to do, your end of the deal, why is going to be their deliverables, so for most people that's going to be payment, if you're a wedding photographer you also might build build in the fact that they have to get you a meal or whatever it is. And then Z is going to be if things go wrong. Right? So this is going to be a little fancy word we like to call indemnity for you as a creator. So in case your gear breaks, in case acts of God, you know, there's an earthquake or whatever, in case you get sick, Blah, 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 okay? So you're basically going to spell out, okay, if gear breaks, if someone tampers with my equipment, if an SD card fails, if, think of all the things that could go wrong, if that happens, you agree that I won't be responsible, I agree to do the following. So it's kind of like contracts within contracts. So it's like, it can be a total waiver um, in of their right to kind of pursue litigation, or it can be another kind of subcontract within that. So they're saying like, okay, so if... For whatever reason, the photographer is sick, the photographer will blank. So you're saying, okay, if this, then that. So if this, then here's my new deliverable and here's what you agree. Okay? So that's kind of what a contract is about. So it doesn't have to be super complex. Again, when you're starting out, I am never going to tell you anything that's legal advice that I'm not an expert in. Okay? So I'm not saying this as legal advice, but I am saying that you don't have to view this as some big excuse as to why you can't move forward. You could always look at Resources like the lawtographer.com. I believe she actually has some contracts you can buy. I have a contract that comes with a questionnaire available on my website. That's my personal contract. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so you can use that starting out and whatever. But that is not me saying, yeah, this will be perfect in protecting you in all ways. Uh, you probably should pay the 200 bucks for a lawyer just to be double sure or whatever. Um, that's why Lawtographer is so great because it's a little bit more affordable and you'll get something you can trust, okay? Um, but that's essentially what a contract is. So to begin with, you don't have to have a big giant thing. If it's just a $50 shoot, you're taking a couple of photos of somebody's product, you can say, hey, so here's my contract. It agrees the price. It agrees the deliverables. I don't know why there's another dollar sign. And it agrees if x then y so in case things go wrong 
Okay, so that's my best summary of all things related to contracts. Hopefully it's helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, okay? Um, okay, retainers, bookkeeping, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about that because my goal in this video is just to set the record straight for all these things that are too complicated and we can talk about them far more in depth inside of the membership. You can send me an email and I will definitely make videos surrounding topics you need help with. So if you decide, okay, I actually wanna start this photography business, stop making excuses, start getting results. And that's about taking action. Taking action is about doing the right things, putting the first things first and as you hit roadblocks along the way, that's the purpose of the membership is you say, hey, Ryan, here's, here's my hand. I actually have a question about XYZ. What do I do? And then I'll make a video on that topic. Like that's the cool thing about this membership is it's actually the content is constantly evolving and growing. As you submit new problems, we're going to come up with new solutions for you. That's the idea. Okay. So you can check that out. There's a link below, or you can head to shop.signatureedits.com and just click on the little thing that says membership. Okay. All right. So uh, we were talking about retainers and bookkeeping. This is kind of like the last thing inside of this video. Because I want to give you like the world's most simple bookkeeping for dummies, which is what I am. And so I like things to be really simple. <laughs> Retainers versus deposits. What's the difference? Well, I had it told to me once, and I'm not even sure how true this is, but I just go by it, that a deposit, as outlined by legal terms, is often refundable. Retainer is not. So do I refund people retainers if for whatever reason COVID happens and I have to refund them because they had to cancel their wedding and like who could have predicted? Well, yeah, <laughs> I do the right thing whenever possible. That's well, not whenever possible. I do the right thing, period. However, that said, um, I don't have to. So if they cancel last minute the day before, I don't have to give them the retainer back. Deposit, apparently, if you use that word in your contract, it sometimes can be. I don't know. Take that for what it's worth, which isn't much. Okay, so... I always say retainer, and you outline in your contract the payment term. So you're going to say that X deposit or retainer is due, and you also say it is non-refundable. Okay, so I think in my contract I say within the first whatever, 50% retainer can be returned. After that, the retainer is non-refundable. Okay, um, bookkeeping. Let me show you my bookkeeping solution, which is not like me saying this is the best solution. It's just when you're starting, you need money. You don't need a fancy, pantsy, like... 18 page Excel spreadsheet. So what I do, you have your account, your expenses, and your income go into that account. Cool, end of the year, you look at your statements and you look at your expenses and your income and you list them on your tax return. And it takes like a day or two and you're done. Okay, cool, that was my entire bookkeeping thing. Now if you are actually out and about, you do need to be collecting receipts for tax purposes, because if you ever get audited, they're going to want to see the receipt. So just having it on your card statement is not enough. They need to be able to see the actual receipt for whatever it was. So what I use is Adobe Scan. And I'm sure there's better programs for this. This is just what I'm using, which is like a phone app. And whenever I get a receipt for a business receipt, for a business expense, like a paper version, I'm out to eat somewhere with a client or whatever, I will take a photo of that receipt, and then I have it. So when you submit your tax return, you don't actually have to upload all the receipts. That's something that I was really confused about to start with. It's not how it works. You literally just say, this is how much I spent on this, this is how much I spent on this, this is how much I spent on this. And if you use something like TurboTax or QuickBooks or whatever, QuickBooks is actually for accounting, TurboTax is for tax. <laughs> um, they'll go through and ask you questions and you can just fill in the blank. It's really simple. You don't need to overwhelm yourself. Once you start making money, you're making $100,000 or more, honestly, that's kind of where I would start saying, okay, now it's time to hire an accountant. Okay, now it's time to maybe switch things up, get a little bit more tax efficient. In the beginning, you don't need to worry about that because it's not gonna make much of a difference and it's gonna be a whole lot of extra effort and expense for what it's worth, right? Okay, so just my opinions, by the way. Nothing in here is like the sworn gospel truth. And if everybody, <laughs> if anyone ever does tell you that in life, it's probably not, okay? They're probably not worth listening to. So we've got our expenses, we've got our income covered. Um, in terms of actually like keeping track of contracts, documents, stuff like that, I will literally have the client, I send them a proposal. Contract. So it used to be that I make like this big, beautiful presentation and it's like, you get this and this and this, and it's going to cost this much. And it was like this beautiful thing. And then it was like, okay, and then here's my contract template. And I just put their names in there, the date, whatever. And then 
I started getting worn out by sending out all these proposals for clients who sometimes didn't even book. And it took me like 15 minutes of proposal, which doesn't sound like much, but if you're doing one every day, it just is like, why am I doing this? So now I just do a paper version. As long as they're already sold, it's like, okay, they can just look at the contract. The contract lays out exactly what they'll get, exactly when they'll get it, and all the other terms they can sign and be done. In terms of actually sending the deposit, I accept e-transfer, which is a thing if you're in Canada, if you're in the States, then you might be doing Zelle or Venmo or whatever. I keep it simple. So in Canada, at least, e-transfer, everybody uses it. And it's just like one thing. I don't accept credit card anymore. I did for a while. Um, and I would just invoice them through PayPal. And then I'd build that, uh, I'd build that extra 3% that PayPal charges into the um, invoice. And so if, for whatever reason, a client actually does require, require a credit card, then I say, yeah, of course. I'd be happy to do that for you, but be aware that we forward PayPal's fees onto you, which is an extra, I think it's 5%. And even if it's not, you can just say, hey, we do charge an extra 5% for this service because it covers our PayPal costs and the cost of whatever, admin. And so you can say that that way, and then you get paid an extra, whatever it is, 1% or 2%. And then PayPal takes the other 3 and that just covers your like pain in the neck cost of actually doing that. And most of the time, the beauty is the clients are like, oh, no, magically they can make e-transfer work or Zelle or Venmo or whatever it is. Okay, So that would be my advice is everything in your business. Look to simplify, not complexify. I don't think that's a word, but it is now. We're complexifying our business by saying, okay, we accept credit card and Zelle and Venmo and Cash App and PayPal and Bitcoin and don't do that. Just make it easy and simple because easy and simple works and it's hard to get confused. Complex is gonna lose every single time. It's hard to scale and then when you actually have to fix things, it's gonna be way harder because you have to look at all these different sources for your income, your bookkeeping, your whatever. Don't do it, don't do it. Have a backup payment option. However, I'd encourage you just make it as simple as you can. So that's how I accept payment. So client process, they reach out, they're like, hey, blah, 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 I'm getting married, blah, 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 blah. So first I do a meeting. We're going like all out this time. I don't know why, we're just making this video really long, we're covering everything. We started talking about LLC, now we're talking about how I actually structure my entire thing. So we're gonna do a client meeting, um, normally by Zoom or in person. It's gonna increase your booking rates by far. During that meeting, I'm gonna ask to book. If they say they need to think about it, that's fine. You say, hey, cool. Just so you know, 24 hour, we have a like fast mover bonus because I want to work with clients who are like, they know that they want to work with me. Like that's how I work because I want to work with people who want to work with me and they, and I want to work with them because that's what makes for great photos, a great relationship, a great time, great experience. And so if you book in the first 24 hours, I have a thank you for booking and it's $500 off or whatever it is, right? That'll increase the booking rate substantially. And you just build that into your prices, right? So if normally you want to sell for $3,000, you would bill it at $3,500, and then you say, okay, $3,000 is my early booking rate. And then most people will take it, okay? From there, you'd have the contract available. Now, I am not with the times. I really should be, so this could be optimized. But ideally, you'd send it with DocuSign, which lets you set it up for free and whatever, just have it right there in the client meeting. The goal is to get payment in the meeting. So it doesn't even have to be the contract. You can worry about that later and say, hey, we'll send you the contract later, but to reserve the date, I need a paid retainer. It's $1,000 or 500 or whatever you want. The goal is to have the money because people will cancel on you if they sign a contract, but they won't cancel on you once they've sent you money. All right, from there, I go onto my Google Calendar and I add their wedding date or their shoot date or whatever it is. And then I add an event that says they paid me X amount of money. X paid by X on X date. So it's $1,000 was paid by e-transfer on July the 20th, okay? And then every time they make a payment, I will actually update that. So I'll say, okay, same thing. X by X on X. We should use different letters, but whatever. It's too late for that. And that way, all of my clients are checked. And once they're paid in full, I literally just write paid in full. I like to do it this way because then at a glance, I can see where each step of my process is because it's simple. Now, you could look at doing something like HoneyBook, which is especially just for like managing clients and doing all this stuff and having contracts back and forth and getting back to each other with email and setting up meetings. It does a great job of that. But for me, one... When you're starting out, 
you don't have a ton of money, you don't want to spend a ton of money. So for me, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this simple. And two, I like simple. For me, that's all I've ever needed. I've never needed more than that, but there's always a better way. So don't let me talk you out of it. However, I would say to start with, you need photos and you need revenue. And then you can add this later once it's like, oh, I just can't keep up with the contracts anymore. I can't keep up with the number of clients I've got going up on anymore. After that point, then you start worrying about something like HoneyBook and accounting software and whatever it is, right? First, we need money, we need clients, and we need portfolio. We need to get the best in the world at what we do so that clients are knocking down our door. And once we've got all three of those things going on, then, then my friend, you can go as complex as you want. Sky's the limit. I would even encourage you to hire somebody to worry about that complexity instead of you. Because at the end of the day, the most valuable thing you can be doing within your business is going to be creating customers, and then whatever, using your star power, we'll call it. That's like the things that only you can do, which to be honest, like there's almost always somebody who's better than you that you could go and hire out to do things. However, star power doesn't just mean things that only you can do. It can mean things that are harder or expensive to pay someone else to do, or it can mean things that you actually love and that you're passionate about. Things that energize you versus things that take your energy away. That's what you want to be focusing most of your time on in this business. Not whether or not you should have an LLC or setting up your contracts or getting your book straight. Like those are all good things. I'm not saying don't ever do them. I'm just saying right now at the beginning, when you're starting out, you want to be doing the things that build your business, grow your business, and that make you passionate about your business. If you get bogged down in the weeds, you're never going to be able to see through to the other side. You're just going to get stuck. It's going to take you far longer to get moving. And what you need is to get moving Movement trumps, I don't know. We've used the word complexity, so we'll use it again. Every single time. Because the reality is, you can actually try and figure out the map in advance. You can have a game plan. And it's 119 pages long on how you're going to revolutionize the photography industry. And then you actually start moving on your merry quest. And you figure out, oh... Okay, I, I hit step three, and now all of this doesn't work anymore because I was totally wrong. Because you're just starting out. You don't have all the answers. That's the whole point. And so by walking, let's call it through the fog of your business, what happens? You take two steps. You see five steps further. You take another two steps. You see another five steps forward. I don't know why it's like an exponential thing. You take two steps. You see two steps further. You take two more. You see two steps further until eventually you get to this other side called success as whatever it is you define it. But success comes from movement. That's what you need. You need movement. You need progress. You need execution. And most of all, you need to put the first things first. If you're not doing that, if you're procrastinating, if you're putting it off, if you're not making sales, you're not talking to customers, you're not working on your marketing, what are you doing? You're wasting time, you're making excuses, you're fooling yourself, okay? So real talk, you need to go out, get some sales, get some customers, do some marketing, and marketing doesn't have to be complex. Like at the end of the day, here's what a sales call is. It's like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I help these people get this result. Hello. Do you want some? Like, that's it. And we make it so complex in our mind. It's like, how do I do the perfect client meeting? There's 59 steps you need to follow. Here's my formula. That's not it. You just need to sit down and say, hey, so my name is Ryan. I help adventurous couples get amazing elopement photos. I do it in the Canmore area and I cost this much. Now, here's the thing, because I'm still starting out, I'm actually doing a 50% discount for the first five clients this month or whatever it is you want to do. Would you be interested? Like at the end of the day, that's what the conversation comes down to. So you're building some rapport at the start. They need to have the ability to see your work. Hopefully you have some testimonials going. You can get those from friends or family if you haven't actually you know, done a ton of client work yet. You can get it from people who just know you as character references. You need a great body of work. And then from there, it's like, okay, do you like my work? This is what I do. I can do this for you. Are you interested? Like that's the whole sales call. <laughs> they didn't sign up to be convinced. They signed up for your call because they've already looked at your work and they love it and they want it.
And as long as you're not a weirdo and you don't throw them off by having a super strange experience, they're probably going to book you. So that's what it's all about is figuring out, okay, how can I build that portfolio? How can I get in front of the clients? And how can I actually ask them to give me money in exchange for giving them what they want? which in the case of weddings is probably going to be amazing photos and memories, right? And an experience working with somebody on the day who they like being with. In the case of commercial stuff, I'll tell you in advance, with commercial work, unless you're working with a giant company like Coke or Patagonia or whatever, if you're working with smaller businesses, all they want is ROI. So if you can prove that you bring ROI, then you're in. Like that's what they want to know. That's what they want to talk about. They don't really care that much about who you've worked with in the past and how much you charge and whatever, whatever. It's like, okay, it's going to cost X much. I'm going to make X much out of it. Is there a guarantee? It's about giving them a high ROI and reducing the risk. Okay, so we've been talking about this for forever, all of the different variables of building a business. Hopefully this has been a good strategic call for you and you've got something out of it. What I want, what I'm challenging you to do is say, okay, out of all this stuff, what is the number one thing that you need to apply to your business today that is going to take you forward? Like what is the number one thing that if you actually did this, you've been putting it off, but if you actually took some action for a change instead of making a big list of all the research you need to do and you just said, you know what, to heck with it, I'm just gonna go for it. What is that one thing that would take you forward today? And then do that tomorrow and do that the next day. But leave that one thing in the comments below, both to let the other people in this group know and also just as a personal challenge to yourself because action leads to results. And so what you need to do is don't leave this video without actually taking some kind of action and writing something in the comments is going to be a tiny little step towards actually making it real and doing it, okay? So that's my challenge to you. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this photography membership, please let me know if you have questions in the comments and head over to the website. You can always reach out to me directly, send me a message, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, okay? In the meantime, create something awesome. I wish you luck, and I hope this answered your questions. See you in the next video. Peace.